name is Ramon Cooper, born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, a father of four now, and um, I can, I'm making this video to uh, discuss daddy issues. You know, a lot of men have those as well, so I felt like I'd speak on mine. Um, let's, let's skip a little bit since moms and came downstairs. Have you and moms had conversations about it? Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but, uh, you know, she know him a lot better than I do. And her thing is, he's he's not changing. He's stuck in his ways. Mm. And she says that it has a lot to do. He was a, the baby of like 10, mm. no father, older siblings, and everybody just babied him and coddled him so he never really had to take responsibility never uh, my dad kind of he tried to live through me uh, so that was a lot of pressure as well right you know we playing football being being an athlete right he i guess that was his dream he saw his dream in me right. so he started to try to live through me uh, everything was about him he didn't really care what I wanted. It's, it's stressful and it's it's a lot of pressure because you, you want to satisfy that parent. You want to live up to those expectations and you don't want to disappoint them. Right. So it, it, it's, it's, it can be stressful. And, and so football ended for you. How did that change the relationship? I think, honestly, that's probably when we really, really hit like the breaking point. That's when I really knew, like, man, you ain't shit. <laughs> excuse my, excuse nah, my language. Nah, I you cuss but, all this. Um, going into college, my my freshman year, like, still being angry, still having a problem dealing with my temper. You know, I was a uh, kind of. I was basically kicked off the football team. Just like, hey. We don't even want you around right now. Like you, you're out of control. Mm -hmm. um, your scholarship is still in place. You can stay here and go to school, um, and maybe we can try this again next next year. You know, in the spring, maybe you could get back on the team. I left that same day. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, I'm out of here. And I kind of knew he would be disappointed, but I didn't think it would be to. That yeah, it it was extreme. Yeah, talk about that. So I and and I'm I'm 18. Right. You know this we're freshmen in college. Right. Just had a pretty good season. We you know y'all put us out. You know lost to y'all to go to the state championship. That's how, that's how we do. But uh, like I said, he wanted to live through me. So in his eyes, he just saw NFL. Like that's that's the big picture. And right. I I never really looked at it that way. I never really was like. Oh, I'm gonna go to the NFL. Right. Yeah, that that was never really a big goal of mine. I'm realistic. Right. The chances are slim to none of that happening. But in his mind, I was league bound. Right. And, and I was the meal ticket, the cash cow. Uh, so uh it started to put a lot of pressure on me. But when I came back home, I came back home the same night and he was not happy. And and the way that he expressed it. I would never talk to any of my kids like that ever. Get into it. And um, I mean, it was it was it was horrible. Like some of the stuff he would say. Um, if I die, don't put a rose on my casket. And just ri ridiculous, re ridiculous. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> because not not because I was dropping out of school right. or I wasn't. Pursuing the education because I was no longer playing football. And he was that mad. He was that mad. Did he play? No. So I he I, I believe he might have played like his freshman year, maybe some freshman football, but nothing really nothing after that. that. High school dropout. So nah, he didn't he didn't play. I I was shocked more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um you know, my mom was there at the time. She was when we had this conversation. And I, she couldn't believe some of the stuff she was saying. And that's just the way he was. He un unapologetic about it. He still has never apologized about it. And we've we've 
talked about that. And a lot of times he tries to say he doesn't remember, mm. but he he remembers. He remembers that. And so from that breaking point, what happened? We didn't talk for months. And we lived in the same house. Oh, shit. We didn't talk for months. You not, didn't speak not, to him? He didn't speak to you? Just That was it? Yeah. Not a hi, not a bye. How was your day? How you doing? Nothing. And, I, and, and you know, it's, it's crazy. It started when I was very small, though. Like, I was embarrassed and ashamed that he was my dad. Mm. Like, you know, like I said, my, my older brothers, that wasn't their dad. So all of the stuff that he was going through in and out of jail on on the drugs, you know, that, that crack wasn't no joke. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, kids are cruel. So they would tease me about it all the time, me and my sister. They would tease us about it. Oh, your dad's a crackhead. Oh, yeah, that's just funny. Yeah, so, um, and it, it, it would frustrate me. It had me so mad. It got to the point, I remember, and we actually went to go see him in jail. Mm-hmm. I was probably about four or five years old. You talking to him through the glass on the phone with my mom. And he wanted me to get on the phone. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I got on the phone. I was like, I don't want you to be my dad no more. I was like four or five years old. So he probably, he's like, what? Because I got so tired of being teased. teased. It's like, I don't mean, and I, I, it, I never, still to this day, I'm 34. I never referred to him or you know, got his attention by calling him dad. Never. Mm. Still to this day. And people always be like, well, how did you get his attention? I was like, I just started talking. Or I was like, hey, you know, I got his attention. I never, Man. never called, never called him dad. Still don't to this day. Oh. And I, I I can tell you that, you know, that's, that's my dad. That's my yeah, dad. yeah, yeah. But I'm never Say like, hey, to him. hey, dad, uh, come, never. And I'm 34. I still don't do it. That's crazy. Man. And he doesn't say anything about that, does he? No, nah, he's never he notices it. I think he does because everybody else did. You know, I have two younger sisters and then I have two older uh, siblings from a different relationship. All of them refer to him as dad. They actually get his attention. Hey, dad, daddy. Yeah. I never did. Never. Mm. I didn't even pay attention to that. That's damn. Huh. Never. Yeah, that's crazy. Um. Sure. I wouldn't even refer to him as my dad when I was younger talking to other people. I would just say him. <laughs> he was he was him. I can't even remember how we started talking again. Honestly. Um, but it we never really talked about on, that. You know, no, we, we didn't talk about that. And we didn't really have too many conversations afterwards. It was just kind of like you stay over there, I'm going to stay over here. We're just going to keep it pushing that way. Yeah. And it's Thanksgiving break. Um, while I'm getting ready to enroll, or Christmas break, I'm enrolling in my classes, and I get a call from the coaches. They want me to come back. Mm-hmm. Your scholarship, it was even better than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I, everything was paid for. So right. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is what we need you to do. You can only take these classes. You can't become a full-time student. Mm. You know, your eligibility, your clock will start. So we need you to just be part-time. You know, take these classes during the spring. Take these classes during the summer. So I think that's probably how we even started to talk again. You, probably, like, you felt like, oh, okay. okay. Hey, I'm, we I'm back going on track. back. Yeah, I'm, I'm going back. I'm right. playing football again. So I think that's how. I think that's what really broke the ice. But I still, I, I wasn't bugging with him. To me. What he said, you, I, you can't come back. No, nah, no. You move forward, but you can't come back. Yeah, and he, like I said, to this day, he, he, he's never apologized. He's he he's not that type though. He's not gonna apologize for anything that he does. Men, we always like to say, women have daddy issues, and it might be true, but we also have those same issues. I know I'm not the only one. I I know for a fact, I'm not the only one with these issues. So, I think. Uh, you guys should go and talk to somebody about it. Don't let it fester and, and, and explode the way it just did for me about a week ago. So um, it's okay to admit that you have daddy issues as a man.